Hello, my name is Colin Onyfre, and I built this model of Maycomb from the book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee as an English project for school, amazingly. And just, it's been a lot of fun. Spent an exorbitant amount of time on this, as you can see. Let's see if I can find it. Statistics. And it's played 1.79 days. 42 hours. It's a lot. And, um, just looking right here, you can see this is the center of town where the courthouse and the jail is. Along with post office and Mr. Underwood's house. Post office, jail, Mr. Underwood's court. And then, backing up here, you see as you back up, you kind of see, you can see the other houses come into the picture. Your Cecil Jacobs house, Mr. Avery. Here you go down to ground level. This is another house in the block that was never, never really mentioned who lived in it. This is Miss Maudie's house, all of her flowers out front, her precious azaleas. Well, Miss DeBose and her flowers out front, her porch that she can use, sit on to antagonize people. Coming further down, you see a uh, Miss Hatterford's house, very nice. And then between Miss Hatterford's house and the Finch's house, the book mentions a stone wall, so I thought I might add that in there. Stone wall running between them. As you walk past the Finch's house, multi-level, bedrooms inside. Actually, something I'll show you later. I didn't just make the houses, I actually went in and decorated and furnished all of them. Miss Stephanie Crawford's house over here. Town Gab. Uh, not very fond of Miss Maudie. Usually spreading rumors about people. Especially Boo Radley, who lives over here in this dark hut over here. Uh, just walk over this real quick. For people who don't know, the um, steel doors in Minecraft can't be opened without a button, lever, or a pressure plate. So, the fact that this door cannot be opened just shows that the kids, it's under the boundaries that the kids cannot go past here. And then coming towards the end of the house, the town is the school. Go past school. See, it's kind of small. It mentions that most of the kids repeated grades multiple times and were for the most part illiterate. But um, coming back around, I'll show you the insides of the houses. So we come over here. Uh, just mind this. Coming back around here through the crossroads of town. Let's see, going to Miss Crawford's house. Miss Stephanie Crawford. Going in. Bookshelves, fireplace, torches to keep everything lit up. Up here, you know, more books, more personal things, bed. And then going back down, and going out the door, see that, oh, it is getting night out, and it seems that we have a friend, hello friend, going over here into the Finch's house, nice fireplace, books, paintings, table, Going upstairs.
more paintings. See these steel doors, they have pressure plates on them so they open. And then a bedroom for each child, Gem and Scout, both main characters in the book. Gem is a 12 year old boy, son of Atticus Finch, a lawyer in the town. And the whole book is about Atticus' struggle between right and wrong. Because he knows that defending Tom Robinson will be frowned upon by all the people in the town. But he needs to do it in order to be able to tell his kids what to do. Because if, because if he didn't, then he would just be the world's biggest hypocrite. Miss Hatterford's house. Going back out. Scout. Jem's younger sister. The narrator of the book doesn't fully understand everything that's going on, but lets the reader know what's going on so they can piece it together. Going into Mr. Bose's house, there's a room in the front, going up to Mr. Bose's room, and bed, chests to keep things in, coming back out. going back out. See, um, the snow on the ground. Scout mentions the snow and that she thinks the world's ending because she's never seen snow before. And her eight-year-old mind cannot comprehend. The Cecil Jacobs house, books, paintings, more things in the walls. Very decorated beds. Decorated as much as you can in Minecraft. Very pixelated 8 bit world. Full of exciting things. Going into the post office, just. You have your counter, some windows, keep the airflow, you know. Going around the square, it's the jail. Very lonely, open. In Mr. Underwood's office. I, I, I wasn't too sure what to put in here, because there's really no printing press that you can make. But going upstairs, you can. This is Mr. Underwood's little apartment for his living necessities. And inside all here are all the all the officials' offices and the tax, the uh, men who does the taxes, the county clerks. Going into the courthouse is probably one of the bigger things I built in this whole project. It's a fairly large courthouse, needs to fit everyone in the whole town. You have your places for the defendants and the defense. Going up here into the jury stands. I'm going to hang out up here. Going over, you have your box for the defendant and your accuser, your judges stand. This is um, the only building lit mainly by glowstone torches, or glowstone chandeliers as I made them. Gives it uh, a darker light. Then going into Mr. Avery's. More books. Who doesn't love books? Upstairs. Going upstairs into a room. Simply put, placed. And finally, going round trip around the block, Miss Marty's house. You can see her Zalia's out front, red. Going into the house, very big 
room. Figured Miss Marty's one of those pers people who likes a good view, so big glass sunroom. Going upstairs. Into a bedroom. And with that, I leave you wondering what that is. For all of you, for all of you who don't know, I leave you wondering. Well, I've had a lot of fun doing this. Many, many hours were put into this, and uh, oh, it's been fun. So, my name's Colin Onyfrey. Uh, goodbye.